Quatsch, Junge, komm her. I just said it, wenn ich den Pappen kaufe, komm her. Wie war das hier aus? Ja, gut, wenn ich... Ja. Was ist hier nicht mehr, TJ? Ja, du willst das sein. Die Mary ist hier. Ja. Ist das richtig? Ja. 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 Ja.
to the various symbols that will be brought to the altar. Uh, a slate blackboard is presented by Christy O'Loughlin and a CD ROM presented by Carolyn Cowman. Here we have reminders of the developments that have taken place over the years, over the years in the education system. We have had to adapt to changes in the curriculum Methods, methods and strategies and the introduction of new subjects. The older people look with fondness at the familiar slate blackboard. Today our pupils are at home with computers, teaching their parents the intricacies of the PC. The school registers are presented by Miko D and Alice O'Connell. The school register reminds us of the pupils who have attended the school over the years. Going back to 1903, we had less than 60 pupils. Today we have almost 200. In this mass, we present all our pupils at the altar. traditionally a rural community with a strong emphasis on dairy farming, represented by Jackie Nolan presenting an image of a dairy cow. A large part of our community is now urbanised and the product of the dairy farmer is delivered in the form of a carton of milk presented by Monica Lee. The 
school plans are presented by Martin Sheehan and a bus presented by Dermot Penny. We are reminded of the rapid growth of our school community over the past 20 years. From a school with two teachers, we now have a thriving school with seven teachers and almost 200 pupils. We were seen as a small school serving a small rural community of teachers, parents and pupils. We welcome all the gifts and talents brought to our community by the pupils, parents and teachers. Light and Candle, presented by Mary Carberry, a parent, and the Alive O book, presented by Georgina Condon, a teacher. The Lighted Candle and the Live O book remind us of the role of the teachers in partnership with parents in the faith development of all generations of children who attended our school. They come into the infant's class carrying the light of faith received through their parents of baptism. Then teachers and parents work to nurture this faith in preparation for the sacraments and full membership of the Christian community. The Globe, presented by Rose Hartney, Rose Kenny. The Globe reminds us of all the places our young people from Dunnockmoor have gone over the years. Those now attending the school are taking their first steps in preparation to go out with confidence, carrying their values and culture to meet the challenges of life in this country and abroad. Board of Management Minutes, presented by Bernie Hartigan, and the Parent and Teacher Association Minutes, presented by T.J. Walsh. The minute books from the Board of Management and the Parent and Teacher Associations remind us of the changes which have given parents and community an opportunity to assist in school management. The Parent and Teacher Associations and the Board of Management were largely responsible for the transition from the old school and prefabs to our fine school of today. Uh, sporting gear is presented by Pat O'Gorman, teacher, and Kate O'Loughlin. Sport has always played a very significant part in overall development of our young people. Many of our pupils who went on to excel in the hurling fields, the basketball court, and many other sports took their first tentative steps at school. We celebrate those who rose to the top in their chosen sports. We value the social skills and appreciation of a healthy lifestyle learned through sport. <laughs> a time capsule is presented by Magella Casey. The time capsule we see before us was constructed by Willie O'Doherty, J.W. Doherty, Engineers Dumbana, and kindly donated as a gift to the school. The plaque depicting time was donated by Michael Kemmy of Stonecraft. The time capsule is a glimpse of the past for future generations of school pupils. For contained within it are written aspirations that some of the older pupils have at present, a school video, photographs, of the all the present pupils and teachers. Today's coins, soon to, soon to become collector's items and donated by Allied Irish Banks. In, in relation to every, which replaced with the euro, plus a volume of articles in relation to everyday life in 1999, these will only be revealed in the year 2025 when the capital is opened and for those who will be present on the day, let us hope these statements will echo. Oh, the past, uh, if only I could resurrect one hour of that time, but which one? Thank you. I just want to thank Pat Hayes for that magnificent int introduction to the symbols that have been so meaningful for us here in Dunnockmore. Before I begin the Mass, I would like to express my appreciation to T.J. Walsh and his co-workers for the magnificent job they have done, along as well with Kathleen O'Donnell and her staff in the school, and in particular, the liturgical committee under the chairmanship of Mary Hurley, Kathleen O'Donnell, Flory Hartigan, Esther Hayes, 
and attractive body. And I think the parish tonight is delighted on this Saturday evening that so many of our priests have come back to us. Father Tom Ryan of Cahardavan, Father Willie Russell of Ratkey, Father Dennis Brown of Valley of Grand, and our own Oliver Plunkett. So let us pause for a few moments as we have come in from the golf courses, have come in from the sports ground, to just once more be focused on Jubilee 2000. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we look back on our life and on our history, and as we look forward into the future, let us pause for a few moments and examine the direction of our lives. Lord Jesus Christ, you have called us to be men and women and children of faith. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have called us to be women and men and children of hope. Christ, have mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have called us to be men and women and children of love, of compassion, but most of all, forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his peace on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your name. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. See our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, may we look forward with hope to our own resurrection. For you have made us your sons and your daughters and restored the joy of our youth. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, you are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate, after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea of what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold when he said through all his prophets that his Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. And this is the word of the Lord.
second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone who does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, why are you so agitated, and why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones, as you see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it, and they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, This is what I meant when I said while I was still with you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, in the Prophets, and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, So you see how it is written that the Christ will suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. by saying, you are witnesses to this. Last night, I had a tremendous experience of witnessing one of the greatest concerts ever put on in the history of Dunlop Moor. It was my privilege to go into the preparation room before the concert began, and I experienced a vitality and an energy and a, an enthusiasm 
that was majestic. And last night, our young people communicated in story and music, in dance and poetry, the history of Donat Moore. But what touched me most deeply was when the singing began. Begin up the more up the own day on choir. Come along, come along, let us put it out together. On Vaka too, on Kali Nali. And the school around the corner, just the same. But it was when our younger people began to put into practice the great song, Maria and Runaway. And it was when I was reflecting on the young people, it recalled my own days in Dunlapmore and the tremendous talent of acting that was so real. And we find it last night in the caliber of Rita Daly, Olive Neville, <coughs> Kathleen Leyden, and Anne Fitzpatrick. We are building on the shoulders of giants. But as the movement began, and when dancing begins, my definition of a Christian has always been the ability to dance with a stranger. And from the walls of Limerick to the magnificent Dunnock Moore River Dance, it was pure magic. But more was still to come. And it was when the young people of Dunnock Moore were dressed in the green and white of Limerick and others in the Kilkenny colours that we have a rehash of the Isle Ireland of 1973. And when the players from this parish, Joe McKenna and Eamon, Gr Eamon Grimes were mentioned, you could see shivers rising in the spines of all of us. But the great respect for two of Dunnock Moore's outstanding hurlers, Bernie and Pat Hartigan, the only Dunnock Moore boys ever to win an All-Ireland medal in 60 years. And I think our young people of Dunnock Moore stood in admiration last night. And that was to be followed by our Camogie players, who, do, who saw in Agnes Sheehy Lenehan an inspiration as holding a Camogie All-Ireland medal. There is deep-seated and deep-rooted in the soil of Dunnock Moore, simply great stuff that has gone on from the past and will continue into the future. Tonight, we'll have to, an opportunity to share stories, to recall memories of the days we spent in school. And as we reflect, we know life backwards, but we live life forwards. We enter into a new millennium with its new challenges and its new opportunities. It appears to me the great challenge that is laid out to all of us is number one, technology, and number two, the refugees. In the realm of technology, I observed the computer in the school today and the various availability of the internet and email. But yesterday, we know that the love bug, a computer virus, has caused business chaos around the globe and has cost millions of dollars. The other area is the refugees fleeing from their countries because of famine, war, and poverty. And perhaps Ireland will have an influx of immigrants that it has not experienced since the reign of Queen Elizabeth I during the time of the plantations. And people will flock to this country from Bosnia and Kosovo, from Algeria and Libya, from Israel and Somalia, with the greatest contingent coming from Nigeria. So as Ireland moves into this 21st century, it will become a multicultural, multi-ethnic, and multi-religious society. 
as we have the largest contingent of Muslims in Limerick now in Raheem. Ireland is changing and it's changing rapidly. And during last Thursday, I had a great opportunity to visit the boys and the girls of the sixth class in Dunnockmore. And we had some fine discussions. And living in a world of technology, in a world of refugees, what question could you ask our young people? And I asked them one question, and I think it is the question of the 21st century. Who am I? Who am I? 